Manabu, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Sure thing. What yeah. is your connection to Japan? Uh, I was born and raised in Japan, uh, Chiba Prefecture next to Tokyo. Mm. And yeah, I guess that's it. Like just, and then I went to the state for a year and then in India as well. Like, except this time, like just, I'm living in Japan. Oh, okay. Yeah. So then that yeah. was for college? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I was in the Seattle. Mm. And then the Goa, India. India is famous for like hippie people. Mm -hmm. And then I learned so many good things, both like good things and bad things there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I, I, it sounded like you had traveled to a number of different countries. Oh, yes, I did when I was in the college, like just mm -hmm. around like 30 countries. And then wow. it's really changed my perspective toward my life. So the, it's, it's a really good experience for me. Yeah. Hmm. Growing up, did you have any entrepreneurial influences? Uh, probably was. If looking back on my life, probably I would say uh, from my mother, mm. because like she's working as a photographer even now, and even when I was a child. So she's a professional photographer. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah, she, yeah, she is, and she also went to the states when she was around my age, like 26, 27, 28. Okay. And she traveled with like circus people from uh, uh, Sarasota, Florida. Oh, wow, yeah. And all over the America. Yeah. And she took the picture of like circus people and she held a exhibition in Japan later. Mm. And also like some drug queen people in Shinjuku, Japan. Mm. And later she went to China, Europe, and I saw her walking so hard like, abroad probably like this it's affected me yeah. to walk overseas i guess yes yeah and during that time would you stay home with yeah. your father or uh no like just my mother divorced with her father so just my grandparents raised me okay I just she staying overseas uh almost like half a year mm. so i like just at the time i was really hating my mother but oh, uh yeah. Because it's uh, when I went to the baseball game on the weekend, like just everybody except me, like just my friend brought like their parents, but like not me. And I yeah. feel like it's so unfair. And then kids usually don't like just different, like just the uh, existence. I mean, just, you know, people want to be the same. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, your mother yeah. had a very creative lifestyle, it sounds like. Yeah. yeah. Where it's not the understandable for kid, just yeah. only 10 years old kid. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm guessing she was supportive of your decision to go visit Seattle yourself. Yes. Yes. Yes, she did. But somehow she's also conservative somehow okay. because just the entrepreneurial life is always having like ups and downs. And she knows it like just definitely. Yeah. So just when I ask her, I mean, just I told her I want to start my own business. And she said, just be careful. And then I was working in the NTT, which is one of the biggest IT companies in Japan. Mm -hmm. So she was pretty happy with this. So she was crying desperately, like, just please don't quit my your deal. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> she, she wanted you to have the stable yeah, life. Stable, stable life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. You, so you actually left NTT? Yeah. Only a year, just after graduating my university. Mm -hmm. I went there at NTT for a year, but just I somehow found the purpose of my life. Yeah. I don't know, I can call it uh, it's a purpose or not, but uh, I found my way to, I mean, just uh, I want to challenge something. Yeah. So just, uh, okay. I quit, yeah. yeah. So tell me, Manabu, what is your yeah. business and what are your revenue streams? Oh, yes. Uh, we are developing like just IT platform, like web platform, where the, we usually like just match the elderly people who live in Japan and also like just the people who are learning Japanese abroad. And because if they have some pains, let's say like now, like just uh, Japan in Japan, like just a lot of like just elderly people are facing like this loneliness, isolation, something, blah, blah, blah. And then just mostly like 30% of the population are over like 60 years old in Japan. Mm -hmm. So we are facing ING society and government trying to solve a lot of like just issues in there. 
So, and then uh, uh, on the other hand, like just uh, the student who want to come to Japan, uh, their infrastructure, like just institution cannot like provide uh, adequate opportunity of uh, learning Japanese, like just the lack of student, I mean, lack of teachers. Mm. And it was like facility, like just anything, everything. So I thought just what if we have a lot of like elderly people in Japan, so just what if we can connect like just people who want to learn Japanese and feeling like just lonely, it's going to be like win-win, uh, win-win platform right. for both of them. And then our revenue scheme is uh, we are charging like a student for like just 10 to $20. It depends on the country. Let's say that just some Myanmar people cannot pay, like just they don't afford to pay like $20 for a month. Mm-hmm. So we lower the price or just if we implement the system to the organization, I'm asking them to pay a little bit like more than like $10 and stuff. And they can talk like just as much as they want. And wow. also like just for now, like elderly people can participate in our platform for free of charge. Mm-hmm. But just in the future, I just want to charge them as well. I like just ask them to pay for a little bit because just somehow they can find a, a purpose of their life. I mean, just they feel lonely and it's just like a virtual traveling. When you speak to like a Spanish people, you can learn something about Spain. And in America, they can learn English somehow. So, yes, this is what I do. Okay. Mm. And I saw, so that's directly person to person. But I yes. also saw that it looks like you're offering a subscription service to yeah. like a nursing home facility yes. where they yes. can rent some yeah. equipment from you possibly. Yeah. Yes, yes, we do. Uh, because just inside of the nursery home, like just they cannot do anything. I mean, like they do the karaoke and then some origami and then the dancing. But just I understand what if they have dementia, they don't know anything. But uh, if they have clear mind and then they cannot move their body, they still want to do something really like just uh, intelligent activity. Mm-hmm. Connection so just, with the yeah. outside world. Yes, 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 it is. So I implement this as something like just a karaoke like facility, and then actually I can earn money from the nursery, uh, nursing home. Right. Yes. Okay. Did this idea, did, were you thinking about developing this type of app like yeah. as far back as when yeah. you were traveling and visiting other countries yes yes oh wow yes. okay when yes, does this yeah, idea really. come about uh i have two a uh, big turn of event it was one was in japan and one was traveling uh india mm-hmm. and then the indian one like this uh i saw so many people living hunter months in india like just sometimes they're laying down on the street and then they're selling their kids Ooh. because just they have to survive yeah. And then just at the time I was like 20 or 21 and then just I got so shocked because just I felt really sense of inferiority to my life because just like I didn't have father and then the, my mother wasn't with me. But just everything changed me when I moved to India. And then the, I thought like just I should contribute to the society a little bit because just I have a really rich life compared to them. Right. And then just probably I realized underlying problem they have was education. Because just even if they get some money from the government or NPO, NGO, whatever it is, just they don't know how to use money. Mm-hmm. So just probably I saw I should approach the educational problem uh, India has. Mm-hmm. And then just, and after this, just I travel abroad, especially like Southeastern country. And then I found so many people learning Japanese. Um, but their problem was just they didn't have teacher and they didn't have companion to speak Japanese. And then I saw like just somehow connecting just the education problem and Japanese learning education problem. Mm. And then after I came back to Japan, this is the second reason. I spent all the money while I was staying in the States and then in India and in traveling. And I asked my mother, could you introduce me as somebody who can speak English from America? And I was expecting like just uh, white, beautiful ladies coming to talk to me mm-hmm. on Skype. <laughs> but she introduced me like old lady from Florida. <laughs> and then old, I spoke. Old circus friend. <laughs> yeah, old circus friend. <laughs> okay. And but it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. She uh, told me so many like just her experience and her philosophy and then American history and everything. 
And I was like, wow, this is really variable. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this is to experience like from India traveling abroad and also like to spoke to the, this American lady. Yeah. And somehow just this dot connected after I quit entity. Right. Yeah. That, that's a really interesting point. Your second experience there mm -hmm. that you realize that you can learn a lot from, you know, an elderly person. Yes. Which, yes. you know, in theory, we all know that, but yeah. is it is it difficult, or have you seen any friction in like people like you that maybe you're younger yeah. and you assume yeah. you know you want to talk with people your yeah. own age and younger? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have to sort of sell the benefit of speaking to an older person? Yeah, uh, the. The shape, like a form of education is really fixed. It's a uh, one size fits all like this education system. And then I do agree with the current education system, like just younger people speak to like just young student, a teacher. And also like they're watching like this YouTube drama. Uh, it's really a good way to learn language or just something new subject. Mm -hmm. But somehow we should, I wanted to extend this uh, type of education to speak to elder is just, I, w I wanted to redefine the education a little bit because just one of the elders' responsibility and then what they can do is to pass down what they felt and what they've seen and experienced to the next generation. So just what I'm doing, just uh, building, like making some bridge between them and then what if they could find it, uh, just really valuable, just why not? Just we should do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. that's great. Yeah. Okay, when you first started your company then did yeah. you bootstrap or did you have help from the outside uh somehow both like just after i quit my job i mean the entity uh i did it everything by myself like just uh, i didn't have money connection information and the skill so i went to the extra school i mean just some accounting school english school again and then just programming like coding school at the time i was so broke just uh, luckily and fortunately, I had a mentor from France, and but I didn't know he's a super rich guy. He was a mentor for years, and then I went to Hong Kong where he lived, and then uh, talked about my project. And then uh, he gave me like uh, three thousand United dollars at the moment, probably the money, like limited money I can bring back to Japan. Mm -hmm. And then he, then after this, he started to invest me. Was that three thousand yeah. or three hundred thousand? Uh, three thousand eight hundred dollars first, but later, like just she, uh, he started to invest me like two million, two million Japanese yen, okay. like every every month, okay. and then totally right now, like just uh, fifty million Japanese yen. Okay. Yeah. So he's he's fully invested, and he sees the the good, uh, yeah. project trajectory of the yeah. company. Yeah. Okay. Not only like investing, but he's also like mentoring me, like just he's teaching me like just what is the beautiful life is and then the, yeah. how I should develop myself and so many uh, philosophy mm -hmm. beside business as well. Was this done in the form of a loan or is, is he it's, equity? Uh, it's a loan first, but just we swap some of the, uh, some of the loan from him to the equity. Okay. Mm. All right. Mm. Along the way, um, it sounds like you had a bit of a rough start there, but have you had any mistakes or setbacks? Oh, yes. Uh, I was and I still am um, a really immature <laughs> young guy, so I didn't know how to spend money. And then the once like just I was spending like five million Japanese yen like every month because just I wanted to refine the IT system. And then when I realized just, uh, I barely have like just some money on my bank account. And then it was, I was so broke. And that time I like, just, uh, just, it was so tough for me to find new, uh, I felt I had a really difficult time to fundraising. Mm. And then I was about to go bankrupt. Yeah. That was a really tough moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in everyday life, just, I'm feeling, uh, lack of my skill, knowledge, and I'm a little bit like an introvert person. So I don't like this. I don't, I, I shouldn't say I don't like, but just, I'm no good at like just mingling with people. 
Yeah. Sometimes I feel a little bit tired to mm-hmm. expose myself to the others. So just, uh, I feel a little depressed about my skill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a tough moment. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. I mean, really a yeah. lot of entrepreneurs are actually introverts. Yeah. And yeah. That's, yeah. It's a surprising thing because yeah, we have to go out there and you're told yeah. to network and yeah. fundraise and yeah. you know, be the life of the party, but that doesn't fit the mold for everyone. Yeah. So it, given your skills and your idea, how, mm. how did you take your idea to figuring out and developing an app? That seems like a very specific skill. Yeah, uh, we don't restrict people's possibility, meaning uh, what we do is just to mediate, like just connect people. So just I'm not asking elderly people to teach Japanese mm-hmm. because what if we ask them, like just, it's going to be the relationship between teacher and the student. I don't like it. Like just I want you to create the place where everyone can learn. So just meaning just elderly also can learn from the student. So just, I wanted to facilitate this communication. So we are the feature of like just to uh, smooth the communication. So this is what we focus. Also, we recorded like just all the conversation and I wanted to uh, maximize and take advantage of this data in the future, just within this year. Let's mm-hmm. say like we analyze the data and the conversation and the facial expression in order to prevent the dementia because just according to some researchers, they already know I like, just some people who have like really limited, like just eyesight and the vision, just they tend to be a dementia. Mm. So just, I wanted to integrate this kind of a new technology into our current system. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And did you hire someone to build the app or did you use like an app template? Uh, I have a partnership with the IT company in Japan uh, and then they developed the system. First, first of all, like we developed by ourselves like from scratch, but it mm. crashed so badly. Mm. So just I found some investor and then he's not only investing, but also support us, like help us develop the system. Yeah. 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 How long on your journey then? It sounds like you were burning through some money in the beginning, learning, learning along the way. Yeah. Yeah. How long until you had some money coming in? Oh, now we are already earning money, but just in order to reach the break, even we still need like just uh, five months. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, I, uh, sorry to say, but just some other like people facing suffering from this coronavirus, but just, it's uh, actually a big opportunity for us since like people staying home and then right. uh, the, some fitness gym close to my office, like just during daytime, like just there are a lot of like just elderly people there. It's just like a nursing home. But like just it's shut down right now. Like it's closed. So just I don't know. I have really no idea where these these like elderly people go. Mm-hmm. So these kind of things going on, and then the number of the user, with both like this domestic one and the international one, we have uh, we are increasing the number of users. Wow! Yes. Wow, wow! That's good. That's good. You're growing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. How are you? spreading the word to some of the different facilities uh sorry or, meaning how, how are you trying to grow your app oh okay uh, now uh what i focus is to have a partnership with a recruitment company which has a branch office all over the world like just especially like in southeastern countries mm. yeah because they have some uh, training facility in like thailand myanmar vietnam uh, indonesia and then they have network to the student. So just we have some partnership and then I pay commission for them. Like just after implementing the system to the student, we pay a little bit like 20% or something. Okay. And then just in Japan, I have also like a partnership with the, this kind of uh, elderly community mm-hmm. and it's spreading and also like just uh, using some media, like just we are promoting our product on the TV. Yeah, I see yeah, you, yeah. you've had some yeah. like uh, natural attention yeah. from nhk yes. and some media yeah. attention helps. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah okay so internationally you're relying on some of those recruiters to sort yeah. of advertise and find yes. japanese yeah. students for you yeah. yes i do okay and are those numbers growing yes uh we have uh four thousand students i mean the users uh, internationally 
Okay. And then there's uh, 1,500 students, I mean the teacher I and mean the elderly people in Japan. Oh, wow. Mm. Okay. Okay. Mm. That's good. That's good. Mm. All right. And how long has your company been around for? Uh, for four years right now. Okay. Yeah. So you've been abroad and you've seen yeah. many different countries and you yes. had a, a, a unique lifestyle growing up, yeah. but... Yeah. What's something you've changed your mind about regarding Japan? Regarding Japan. Uh, yeah. Japan is a really happy country, I guess, compared to like just these countries where like some uh, people who are struggling with their, their everyday life. Mm. Um, what changed my perspective when I'm traveling? I don't know, but just I could understand like just people's pain, I guess. I'm trying to put myself like just on someone's shoes and then this big change for me. Yeah. And I learned so many things just like, uh, if I'm out of care for anything, just what I'm telling myself is just probably it's to move and trying to eat someone's food and then trying to, trying to wear someone's clothes. I mean, mm-hmm. just touch something and I hear something and then the, uh, that's changed my life. Just like just interacting with like hippie people, they told me just just be unique, yeah. and then just in Japan, like just I really appreciate Japan because just since I was born and raised in a single mom family, government support me a lot. Mm-hmm. But somehow, the what if I try to do something new, people see me as like maverick, and like, ah, you go crazy, and then you have to stay in the company at least for three years. But look at like a hippie people, like just mm-hmm. <laughs> they do whatever they want. So just right. I feel like oh yeah, this is probably freedom. And I, do, I shouldn't be so much like uh, pessimistic about my life. It's okay. Mm-hmm. Don't worry. Yeah. So, so growing up, it sounds like your, your thoughts of Japan were yeah. a little bit more like, um, you know, you didn't fit in and yeah. you weren't the same as other people, yeah. but now yeah. you're sort of embracing that, yeah. that difference, yeah. that freedom. Yes. Yes, I am. Yeah. Okay. There's a pros and cons, I guess. Yeah, mm, like just uh, now I realize just why I'm traveling. I mean, after coming back to Japan, I realized just I didn't know anything about Japan. I like just when I spoke to like some American and some Europe people, and then the, they know about their countries a lot and their history. Oh. But for me, like just some Indian guy asked me why a sumo wrestler doing like this step before they go to this uh, mm-hmm. stage, and I couldn't explain it. So just I thought like just before I go abroad, like probably I should know and learn Japan first. Mm, yeah. 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 You learn a lot about yourself and your country. Yeah. When you go yeah. to another country. Yes. Mm. Okay. And how do you and your business stand yeah. out from the crowd and get attention? I'm sure you must have some competition. Yes, yes. Probably now we should focus on the issue that Japan has. Like it's, they're trying to solve the problem uh, in terms of elderly people. And then the Japanese government trying to accept a lot of like international people from overseas. Mm-hmm. So just uh, one of my strategies to live up to the, the expectation from the government. And then just probably well, if I do this, media support me. Mm-hmm. And then the... A lot of like people who are also like investing, like just to the startup, they feel a little bit secure to uh, give me a little bit of money as well. Yeah. And then like just to, what if I say like really detailed things, probably I should find a matching system and so many things, but the, I shouldn't lose the big picture for really like just uh, another like three to five years. This is my strategy. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, just I probably like just narrow down and focus on the, everything just right in front of me. Mm-hmm. But it's really sometimes it's my mind, like just my focus. So like just I try to have like a zoom in and zoom out mindset. And then now my mode is to look on a little bit like just for the future. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. okay, we will take a short break here and we'll be back yeah. with the Shinkansen speed round.
Okay, welcome back. Manabu, where were you born? Uh, Chiba Prefecture in Japan. And where do you currently reside? Uh, Chiba Prefecture as well, like Kashiwa City. Okay. Mm. And how old are you now? Uh, 28. Okay. What do you do for stress relief? Uh, I'm going to the gym to work out. Okay. Yeah. How, how often do you get to the gym? Uh, three to four days a week. Good. Yeah. What is a Japanese food or drink that you're sort of hooked on right now? I love uh, karage. Ooh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you must miss it so much. Well, we have Japanese restaurants. And, oh, yeah? Yeah, my son will take karage for every meal if he could. Oh, that's so, cool. That's cool. Yeah, so we get that a lot. Yeah. Mm. I mean, fried nice. chicken does does well everywhere, I think. Oh, amazing. <laughs> Where was the last place you vacationed and for how long? Probably to Barcelona yeah. for two weeks. Nice. Mm. Okay. What book would you recommend for our small business Japan listeners? Tempu Nakamura's book. Probably it's a really minor book, but he's a philosopher from Japan. Do you know if he has any of those translated in English? Uh, I have no idea, but probably there must be. Okay. I don't a know famous that. philosopher. Okay. Fam- famous philosopher. Yeah. All right. Okay. So slowing it down, what advice would you give to someone wanting to start their own small business? I think if you are on the fence, whether you really try or not, and then probably you should get started first, Mm -hmm. just because just this is the 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 first. First, first way, like just obvious way to find out, like just you are really qualified or not, or like just what kind of tool you need to get, like just what kind of experience you should achieve from now on. So just to, yes, just start it. Okay. Yeah. What is something that you're excited about right now? Uh, it was Olympic, but it's postponed. <laughs> yeah, it just came through with the postponement. Yeah. Now, now you get a, another year to look forward to it. <laughs> yeah, and then I like jazz music so much, and I have favorite like jazz singer named like Chi Ayado, and then her her concert was supposed to be held on the middle of middle of April, but it's canceled as well. So just I don't know, just probably the gym for tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yep, got to yeah. focus on short-term <laughs> happiness. <Yeah. right>? Yes. <laughs> okay. So, Manabu, what is yes. next for you? Now I'm fundraising around like this one million US dollars, mm-hmm. and then the, it's gonna be a big step for me. I can build a team as well, and then the, I wanted to refine the system much better than right now, like current one. Okay. So I'm working on it right now, and then the, this it's really. It's really exciting. Yeah. So when you say refine the team, how yeah. are, you, are you planning on growing the team in a certain area? Yes, growing the team. Like just, I need really qualified team members okay. just in terms of like just everything. Like just now we have a team, but just I need new engineers. And then the, but just my strategy is not like just hiring so many people, but like just we're having partnership with outside of the company. Mm. Mm. Okay. So this is what I wanted. Mm. For the future, then you're planning on scaling this company. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, we do. And I'm excited for the creating the same business model, not only for the Japanese elderly people, but like just American elderly people, like a French, Spanish. Just uh, this is what I want to do because just all developed country will face uh, aging aging society soon. Mm. Okay. So one of your ultimate yeah. goals is to take this into same model into other yes. languages yes oh, yes that's big yes. Yeah. Mm. okay that's interesting and what do you think is next for your industry uh probably like a big wave of immigrant will come to japan soon because just japanese government say like they will accept like uh, uh, 300,000 people soon just by the 2013 or something. Mm-hmm. So just not only like a providing communication tool, but we also provide and develop some automation tool, like just to automate 
some documentation, something like this, because it's really cumbersome, like just burdensome to write down all the papers when they accept one international person. Mm -hmm. So I am working on right now to just uh, the, 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 how to say it in English, just to, to optimize the documentation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So not just as these immigrants coming in to become yeah. students, but yeah. you're aiming to help them with the paperwork of getting paperwork, set up in yeah. Japan. Yeah. Oh, wow. There are a lot of like, uh, room for improvement mm -hmm. because it's really all industry. Like just, they're using papers to rely on uh, some uh, manual work. Just, there must be a little like a business opportunities there. Okay. Mm. So built off of your app or through your yeah. website, yeah. you're thinking of expanding not just the Japanese language, but yeah. sort of like a, a guide to starting in Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we do because there's probably there must be two ways to increase the productivity. One is to accept like some uh, workforce from overseas. And then the second one is to increase the productivity. And then just probably like just companies should think of like these two opportunities. I mean, they should uh, take advantage of these two opportunities. Right. So just one and we can provide because just one, if uh, some of the like, other like a student register our service, we can have the database and then we shouldn't rely on some recruitment company, but we can also introduce these students to the other company, which we uh, which want some international workers. And then we can probably cut off so many brokers because one of the problem is in this industry is they are low like brokers and then they uh, take money from the student and then basically like a student uh, having like some debt before they come to Japan. This is the reason why so many like let's say Vietnamese people, they commit some crime because they have some money issue. Mm -hmm. So just we want to do this, some recruitment business. And then also... Uh, the company which accepts international people, they should probably reduce their unnecessary work by automizing, I mean, the, doing some, using some IT system. Mm -hmm. So just, I want to provide like a two, two systems. One is communication and interacting with international people and one is reducing their, their unnecessary job. Okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. And going forward with, technology always changing now yeah. have you explored like a partnership with with a with a company that provides like microphone headsets or tablets or something like that uh not devices but like just technology itself yes like okay. just nac and then the kayak this is the the kayak we are they have our equity as well like they have my share and then the NEC, like I'm really excited working with them mm, because they have a lot of like technology, like just state of the art, like just technologies. So, what was they, the last company? Uh, the NEC. NEC. Oh, okay. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Like just that one I told you, like just it detects the the vision, and then the, they can they can tell people like probably you tend to be dementia or just they detect the tone of a voice and everything. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Mm. All right. Good partnerships. Yep. Yeah. All right. Is there something you feel the Japanpreneur community should know about that maybe I didn't cover? For real, like just uh, Japanese entrepreneurs shouldn't only look at like just Japanese market because just when I started this project, like I went to Thailand first and then I realized, wow, is there a lot of like opportunities there? Mm -hmm. And then they have totally like a different mindset from Japanese. So I wanted to say like this, the Japanese entrepreneur only shouldn't like look at the Japanese market, but like just probably we can uh, use the idea to other countries. So uh, yeah, just look at outside. Yeah, think bigger, think globally. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, if any Japanpreneurs out there wanted to get in touch with you or find out more about your business, where should they go? To get in touch with me, probably uh, you can find me on Facebook. Uh, and then the, about my business, probably you can search like Helte. It's the name of my company, like H-E-L-T-E. -E. Okay. And Healthy. some of the information is there on the internet. 
Okay. But mm. the communication app that you're offering is called yeah. Sale? Yes, Sale. Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. Okay, Manabu, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so today. much. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your time.